Welcome to Upticks. I'm Jake Falcon, the founder of Falcon Wealth Advisors and your host of Upticks. Today is episode 167, fourth quarter market update. Thank you for joining me back on the show. Hope all of you out there are staying safe and healthy during this horrible pandemic. We've recently sent out a couple of emails um, from Falcon Wealth Advisors. One, just to clients that has a trade summary of all of the trades uh, that we've done for the third quarter, along with all of our current positions and our stock holdings. Um, so if you didn't get a copy of that and you're a client, please feel free to let me know and I can make sure that our research and trading group sends that over to you. Uh, I also sent out um, a broader uh, email uh, to both clients and non-clients about just our market outlook. And so today's topic of upticks is about that. And so I really wanted to talk about for the fourth quarter, what we're paying most attention to. But before I get into that, I wanna talk about the first three quarters because it's, it's interesting to me when I'm starting meetings with clients uh, for their normal reviews and they're coming in, the media has really painted a brush uh, that the market hasn't done well. And as of the recording of this episode of Upticks, the S&P 500, which is the 500 largest companies in America, it's an index, is up around 20% year to date, believe it or not, still through a pandemic. Uh, and that's easily twice the historical average. Um, so many of our clients' portfolios are above their historical benchmark or their averages as well. So it's actually been a really good year for the market. And even last year, when we had the 30% correction in March, the market recovered and still had another above average year. And on average, the S&P 500 uh, returns around 9%. Okay, so, um, so for the last two years, we're tracking at above average returns during a horrible global pandemic. So you may ask yourself, well, why is that? Uh, and the important thing to remember is that the market is not about good or bad. It's about better or worse or beating expectations or not beating expectations, right? And so that's what's happening. So when everything shut down last March and the market collapsed 30%, nobody knew when or how companies could open back up and how they would respond and how they would shift and find ways to become profitable and still sell their goods and services. Well, the companies that excelled at that are now worth more money because they have shifted their business plans and they are profitable and they are still making money, right? And so that's why I don't want you to worry so much about what the media tells you. It's more about our companies beating expectations or not. And our goal at Falcon Wealth Advisors is to directly invest in companies that we think are going to beat expectations, right? And that's a whole idea of investing. Now, as far as the fourth quarter is concerned, there's really four things that I'm paying attention to. And number one is interest rates. Interest rates have been extremely low for a good amount of time now. Uh, and there's been talk from the Fed that they're going to begin stop or, or begin tapering um, their bond purchase programs here in November, very soon. And so we can expect some volatility around that, but again, it's expected. And so as long as they don't do something more dramatic than what the market is anticipating, uh, I could, could see the market continue to drift up regardless. But I will be paying close attention to interest rates because the first step is for them to stop buying or, or to taper their bond purchases. And then leading into 2022, we're gonna find out, are they actually going to start raising rates? And actually raising rates wouldn't be all that bad of a thing. It's a help protection against inflation, which I'm going to get to here in a moment. Uh, you can think your savings accounts or CDs, certificates of deposits, are going to start paying more interest. Uh, but there's also a downside to it that mortgage rates will probably go up. And so that may cool off the housing market a little bit as well. So interest rates are very important. I think the Fed has been very accommodative and very transparent. Um, so as long as they keep that theme, I don't see that rippling the market too much, but their actions will influence which types of stocks and bonds perform well. And we certainly are going to look to take advantage of that. Now, as far as inflation, many clients are bringing that up because we're all starting to feel it. Gas prices are up because oil went from negative, uh, believe it or not, a barrel, negative dollars a barrel, which I, is still a weird thing how that can even happen, 
to over $70 a barrel. So when you have that, naturally gas at the pump is going to cost more. And we're also seeing food prices increase. And so all of those things are going up. Now, in my opinion, the best hedge you can have for inflation is to own stocks because the whole idea is the oil companies or the companies that produce and manufacture and make the food uh, that we buy at the grocery store. Because those prices are higher, those companies are making more money. And so by definition, the value of their stocks should be worth more money. And so by owning stocks, your portfolio should increase, hopefully faster than the rate of inflation to help protect your purchasing power. But we certainly believe inflation is here. I don't think uh, it's going away anytime soon. I'm not really concerned about hyperinflation at this point, and that certainly could happen. But I'll tell you, inflation is a much better problem to have than deflation. And deflation is the opposite of that. And so it's the idea is that the prices of goods and services are going down. And so you may ask yourself, well, Jake, why is that a bad, bad thing? I like it when prices are down and things are cheaper. The issue is when you have deflation, individuals stop buying things because the idea is if you want to go buy a new car and you're confident that the price is going to be lower in three months or six months or even a year, you will hold off on buying that car. And, and the idea is you're not the only one. So everybody else does as well. And so what happens is companies can no longer sell cars. And so companies go out of business and, and that's actually bad for the economy and for the marketplace. All right. So uh, inflation's good. It's here. Owning stocks is a great way to protect yourself. And that's what we're doing, right? Okay, so the third thing that I wanna talk about is the tax plan. That's been a hot topic lately. And I want you to know, uh, we at Falcon Wealth Advisors, we're certainly not ignoring the tax plan. We just haven't produced much content around it yet because a lot of things are still up in the air. So I'm not going to waste our audience's time uh, with talking about what ifs and a tax plan. We all assume that taxes are going to go up in some form or fashion. And if and when that day comes, we're going to adjust our tax planning, our financial planning accordingly, right? But that is one air of uncertainty that's in the marketplace. So the idea is the quicker that we can get a bill passed, no matter what it is, the better for the market. The market hates uncertainty. And so when you have all of these, think about it, if you're, if you're running a Fortune 500 company and you're concerned that your corporate tax rate is going to go up, you may hold off on hiring people or expanding or buying buildings or whatever you may be looking to do for your business because you have to factor in what your taxes are going to be. And, and that may impact your bottom line. And so you may not be able to do some of the things that you want to do. And so it freezes businesses up a little bit when you have that uncertainty, and that's why the market doesn't like it. So in my opinion, I would love to see a, some sort of tax plan, spending bill, whatever they want to do, get through, right? Uh, let's figure out what the new rules are. Let's adjust our financial plans accordingly and move on. All right, so the quicker we can get that layer of uncertainty out of the market, the better. All right, very good. And then the fourth thing that I wanted to talk about with you all today uh, is China. Uh, China has had um, a lot of stress uh, as far as the government coming in and, and laying restrictions on some of the companies uh, in China. And so I've been asked, are we looking to exit our positions in China? And we're not. Um, we feel confident that the individual stocks that we own in China uh, are good ones, are solid ones, and they are going to adapt and adjust to the new rules or whatever restrictions are put on them and move on accordingly, right? So we're very careful, obviously, on the individual stocks that we pick, um, but I want you to know that uh, we're not going to flee a, a, an entire country uh, or sector because of that. So again, as long as we know the rules, good companies will adapt and adjust, and that's part of being in a globally diversified portfolio, and you want that uh, with the whole idea is that we wanna hit your target rate of return, taking the least amount of risk as possible, and in our opinion, having a globally diversified portfolio it's going to allow you to do that. And for my bonus update here, real quick, before I go into the bonus update, it's, it's probably the best thing that I'm going to tell you. Uh, a quick plug. Thank you so much for everyone that's tuning in and for all of our new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying our content. Uh, if you do like what you're seeing, please feel free to give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. That's the best way that you don't miss another episode of Upticks. My business partner, Corey Bittner, also has his own show on this same channel on YouTube called In The Money Insight. It's also out there on your favorite podcast platform. Okay, so for my bonus update, uh, I wanna talk about earnings. Corporate earnings have actually been really good. And that's, in my opinion, 
and I keep saying that, and the reason I keep saying it, in my opinion, is because my compliance department prefers that, right? Because again, um, everybody has their own opinion, and, and this is just my viewpoint of the fourth quarter uh, look ahead. No, no results are guaranteed or, or anything of that nature. And so again, that's why we've got to take everything that anybody says with a grain of salt. Okay, so uh, so corporate earnings, they've been really good um, out there. And so that's why you've seen a run-up in the market. And so that's really what we pay the most attention to at Falcon Wealth Advisors. And so the whole idea is if, if a company's making more money, if their earnings are, are better than expected, then the stock price will go up. And again, it's not good or bad. Somebody's earnings may actually be lower than what they were pre-COVID. Um, but if they are making more than what is expected, then the stock will go up, right? And so that's been a really, really good sign. Uh, and then obviously the overwhelming, uh, the, the 10,000 pound, you know, elephant in the room, COVID. Uh, like I said in the beginning of my show, hope all of you out there are staying safe and healthy. Uh, if we can get the booster to filter its way uh, into the population and the COVID numbers continue to drop, uh, hopefully we can get to some level of normalcy uh, very soon. So that's that's our that's our stance, right? So what are we doing? Without going into the details of the individual stocks that we're buying and selling, um, we're just st staying true to our process. We're rebalancing the portfolio. If it's outside of five percent of our investment tolerance for our clients, we're making good individual stock and bond investment decisions, uh, and we're monitoring it. And we're making sure that we've got an adequate amount of money not in the market that you need to live off of according to your financial plan for at least five years, ideally ten years. Uh, and then everything else, we have that stock bucket. And the whole idea is we want to see long-term growth out of good, solid companies there. Okay, that is all the time that I do have for you today. Uh, as far as fun topics, the golf season's still here. I, I know the lights dimmed on me. I've, I've got automatic, automatic lights in my office. Uh, but I am going to golf today. It's a Friday that I'm recording this. I'm trying to squeeze in a few more rounds before the end of the season here in Kansas City. Uh, much is the same with Rachel and I and Einstein. Uh, Rachel loves the fall weather. Uh, anyhow, so... Uh, things are good at the Falcon household. Like I said, hope all of you out there are staying safe and healthy and uh, have a great week.